All right, so uh, this is going to be part two of the flamethrower tutorial, and we're going to continue where we stopped last time. And uh, as a start, we will try to modify the size <coughs> of these pieces. Uh, usually, we need to use what we can see here in front of us, which is the FFD or freeform deformation modifier, which allows us to change the, sh the shape of the whole thing without losing without losing um, uh, actually without controlling every vertex manually or you can do this manually as well if you see that there is a need to do that if you are good at doing this all right especially if we don't have too many vertices but if there is a case where we have a ton of vertices we have to do this using a modifier which is going to make it uh, uh, which is going to give us a better better results and uh, better control over the whole process all right so uh, as in, in this throughout this tutorial I'm actually not focused too much on the details but I'm trying to get something close to what we can see uh, in the final result that you can see uh, in the for in the start of the video all right so here uh, we are working on the trigger this is not really uh, a complicated piece as you can see, we are using a plane here in order to, um, in order to, um, as a starting point, I should say, and then we're gonna add a few edges in order to control how this thing looks. Okay, so it seems like uh, this part here or this trigger here is not complicated, but it looks, uh, it has a certain look to it, or it has. Um, specific shape or type of geometry that we need to follow and uh, <clears throat> it's not that complicated it is just a few polygons and few edges that we need to extrude so I just removed that part because uh, because otherwise it's not gonna work properly or it's not gonna be functional according to uh, the, the design of this weapon and uh, we have to put uh, put it inside the the handle in order to actually show that this trigger is actually kind of it enters inside the handle one when when we pull it in and um, actually when we uh, when we fire or something like that it goes in and when we when we release it goes back to its original position or its resting position. And as you can see here, we just we just gave it a thickness using the shell modifier, and right now we're gonna extrude these uh, two sides uh, manually. This is not gonna be a big deal. It is actually something very simple that we can do really quickly. And over here, we are gonna try to add a nice detail uh, by extruding some of these uh, vertices as well in the front. All right. We can select these vertices and align them on the uh, on the y on the y axis, and uh, we can actually control these manually if we want to. All right, so um, you can you can change whatever you want. You can uh, push these vertices or that edge or these edges in the front actually to make those extruded uh, polygons a little bit smaller. Also, this this big piece here. I actually think this is gonna be a floating geometry, meaning it's not gonna be part of the low poly version, and it's gonna be baked. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna show up in the final result that will bake inside Substance Painter, but but it's not gonna be part of the low poly. All right. So technically, technically, it's gonna be present using the normal maps. So this one here, we just uh, modified it a little bit and uh, we are going to bring the other half back using the symmetry modifier, which is a very useful modifier that allows us to um, kind of avoid doing the work twice, which is essential, which is an essential thing to have. All right, so let's move on. So... Um, uh, I'm trying to find a material that looks dark enough and not too dark.
it seems like there is a checker texture in there that doesn't seem like a checker texture anyways right now we will um, work on the uh, start working on the second half of the of the of the flamethrower and uh, we are starting off with the cylinder uh, we're gonna make sure it's 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 in the center uh, there are many ways to do this uh, we can align this to the center of this piece and uh, we'll try to kind of reduce a little bit um, its size or its radius and convert it to edible poly make sure that the sides uh, you have enough sides to make it smooth enough for um, for this type of geometry or uh, kind of this type of thing I don't know how to name specific pieces inside these complicated uh, machinery or weapons but uh, you get you get you get the idea I hope you understand what I mean and um, yeah this um, we have this cylinder and we have three cylinders that are gonna be on top of it so uh, a better way to make sure that we're gonna have the uh, these cylinders perfectly um, center, centered around the big cylinder we're gonna actually shift the center or the pivot to align its pivot to the pivot of the big cylinder and we're gonna copy them as instances this way we are going to make sure that they are exactly where we want them to be which is what you can see here and um, we are going to copy this one in the center make sure uh, we're going to have the same thing going on also we are going to make it a little bit smaller or bigger depending on what uh, we want the final result to look like alright so uh, the big cylinder in the uh, actually uh, the cylinder in the center needs to be a little bit different and um, we're gonna make sure that uh, these cylinders actually are not gonna stay as they are because we want to uh, weld weld them together because we only need the outer side of these cylinders and the overlapping parts we are gonna get rid of as you can see here uh, of course you need to attach these first in order to do this all right so we're gonna convert these guys into a poly and attach them together probably and get rid of the parts that are not gonna be needed as you can see and of course what we will do uh, our goal behind this is to unify these and weld them together and end up with one piece that is going to represent the um, the outer shell of uh, of what we call uh, just um, actually I haven't worked on weapons in uh, a few months now because I was busy doing other things but yeah these kind of things are nice to work on and uh, it's uh, it's exciting I love working on nice pieces of weaponry and uh, uh, stuff like these uh, machine guns and um, uh, guns and um, everything that is kind of uh, a fire weapon is nice to work on even though this is uh, actually this is a literal fire weapon it throws fire which is uh, which is ironic but uh, yeah it's uh, it's it's um, especially if the weapon is way complicated then then uh, then it should be with lots of details I wish I have the time to uh, yeah so this this piece here is gonna be representing the the barrel and it's kind of different because this is a flamethrower and I was as I, I was saying before, I wish I had a lot of time to spend I don't know maybe a week or something nonstop working on comp on a complicated piece for fun for my my personal fulfillment and my my personal enjoyment and stuff. And 
um it's it's possible but with the um with the things we have to do it's um uh <clears throat> it's kind of uh you feel yeah you feel satisfied but you feel guilty because uh we have a lot of work to do as well so anyways and um uh, as you can see we will try to make sure that the um we will extend this a little bit further and push it forward and if you guys enjoy these uh these tutorials and videos please uh please uh, if kind of um please show some support if you will because uh i don't feel as motivated as i was before to create these tutorials i'm not gonna lie but um i will try to keep th keep doing this anyways we'll see what We'll see what will happen in the future, especially in this year. I think Inspiration Touch is, is going in a different direction. It's not completely different, but um, um, sometimes uh, we kind of love... I, I personally love working on these tutorials, but sometimes with uh, changes we have to cope with, uh, we have to evolve and uh, keep growing because uh, if if it is we we are always uh, moving we are either moving forward and becoming better or we are moving backwards and becoming worse change is, is the only constant in the universe especially online if you are not making progress you're gonna be left behind and uh, yeah, if you can see, this is completely completely off topic, but especially online, those who don't actually um, grow and become better every year, they're gonna be left behind and they will die, unfortunately. So I'm trying to. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I'm trying to um, make sure that um, I'm seeing enough results to grow this. Uh, this project that I called Inspiration to Us. I created, created it first because I love teaching and I love um, kind of uh, showing new stuff or old stuff or concepts about 3D and teaching uh, the basics and uh, giving information about 3D software but it has to be monetized somehow and the first channel now is talking about uh, information about 3D software which kind of somehow keeps this project alive because through those ads I am able to keep doing this and even though I'm not as active on this second channel doing tutorials I think uh, it helps to keep the thing going because I'm not gonna lie to you at one point I was going to throw it all away because this is uh, there is a thing called life and we have to make money somehow all right so yeah that was the uh, the price of staying alive to kind of um, do less tutorials and do more videos of that type Anyways, here uh, we are working on the muzzle of the um, of the flamethrower. I don't know if technically this is called the, should have the same thing as <clears throat> as fire weapons. I don't know, probably not. But I hope this video doesn't get kind of blocked by YouTube talking too much about firearms and weapons and shit <laughs> with the new policies and stuff. It's uh. All right, so um, here we are trying to create a line, and um, this actually is going to be very good for creating something uh, kind of a tube with uh, a, a curvy tube. Uh, it's not straight, but it's gonna, it's not going to have. Uh, it's going to be. It's going to look organic and nice, uh, and it's going to be uh, very good for this situation here. Uh, using the using splines is is a really good way to model inside 3ds max or any kind of software because it gives you the freedom and speed and uh, lots of things 
that are not easily uh, achieved through polygon modeling. Alright, so we're going to change the radius a little bit. <clears throat> if you are, I don't know if I should say this or not, but if you are watching this, um, thank you very much for the support so far and a few of you were asking about the second part, but I don't know what I'm saying right now actually. But uh, yeah, so thank you for the support so far and I'm trying to keep this thing alive as I said before by doing other stuff but I have plans for working on this channel more and more and uh, working on environments and uh, game environments and stuff and uh, showing you how to create these kind of stuff but yeah, we'll, we'll see where this goes because creating tutorials is a little bit difficult and the uh, the return on investment is almost non-existent. Uh, except the support uh, I'm getting and uh, the things you're learning, guys. So, yeah, I think it is worth it in the end of the day because not all the all the rewards are monetary and um, uh, actually um, not all the not all the rewards are something that you see in your bank account so it's worth it in the end of the day actually the um, it, I think it is all about the journey it's about seeing you guys make progress and learn and uh, uh, having or giving, giving back and seeing the world um, get better through the work uh, we do. It's, uh, I think it is the greatest reward to, to give back and to feel good about the fact that you're not selfish. I'm trying to make this project or business or whatever it is becoming as big as it should be because uh, or as it as big as it can be because uh, I want to <clears throat> give back in in a bigger way and I'm not as much as it seems like a lot of people are interested in the money and stuff and monetizing their content I wanted to I want to invest um, the um, the time I'm investing here and the money I'm getting back to this project and make it as big as I can because it is worth it actually it is worth it if anything uh, it's uh, it's a pleasure and it is it is a heck of a ride as they say and uh, I, th I, I know that I'm getting off topic here. I hope you can uh, understand what is going on here. And uh, I'm not really commenting on what's going on. But anyways, I think there is a lot of potential in this, uh, this, this industry for, for this project, uh, specifically the Inspiration Touch project. It is, uh, there is a lot of room for growth because here's the thing. Um, 3D artists in general are not businessmen or women or whatever. They are not business minded. They don't think too much about, they want to help, but most of them are not really uh, savvy when it comes to uh helping in a big way in, in in a way that is gonna be universal or big enough to be something great in great enough in the future and they don't have time to do this because 3d artists or kind of type of people that works 15 hours a day without finishing their work without being satisfied with the results so time is the biggest problem 
All right, so I will try actually to uh, hire some people to work with me on this project, I, probably to create courses or, uh, I don't know, probably expand this to uh, something bigger to be able to to generate better results in the future and yeah i i would like to create complex stuff like these like complex weapons and um armors and i don't know something uh uh probably like iron man level of complexity but the return man the it's um it's too much it's time the time i invest in the effort uh, the return on investment is not gonna allow this place to or this project to 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 stay or keep getting enough fuel to keep moving forward it's gonna stop and crumble and fall down and die so we have to monetize this project somehow to keep it alive as I said before and I actually spent too too many uh, too many days and spent too many hours creating these tutorials it was nice getting that support and um, the uh, the support I've, I, I have seen from patrons and stuff but still that was kind of it was nice thank you very much for those who supported me but still it wasn't enough it wasn't that big enough so in order for me to be able to have that time to create more tutorials and more impressive stuff we need to pay um, a price that will not probably be um, that uh, that great or it's, it's not gonna serve the interest or it's, it's not gonna be that interesting for a lot of you guys so we have to um, I personally w would like to create these type of tutorials all day long and kind of show you how to all my process but it takes time man the editing and the recording and doing the voiceover and uploading and creating it's it's not fun but I'm trying to do it as much as I can and I'm right now going through uh, a process kind of a transition from I hope this <laughs> this this video here is um, the voiceover has nothing to do with <laughs> with what you can see here in front of you but uh, anyways for those who are really wanting to learn what is going on and I'm trying I'm kind of talking nonsense I'm sorry for that so uh, well, I will try to do my best to um, keep this project growing and healthy and uh, helpful for people but for the time being sorry for those who supported me and want more tutorials more tutorials I should say yeah but uh, for now we have to you have to bear with me and uh, I promise I'm gonna be back I hope I'll be back and I want to but if I don't please forgive me but I will make sure that I will create more tutorials and more more, more complex stuff and beginner stuff and advanced stuff anyways it's gonna be uh, I think it's gonna be awesome if we we manage to keep this project alive and uh, healthy and growing so as you can see here <clears throat> as you can see here this um, this cylinder here we just removed uh, all of it and we kept one side then we we brought back all the others because uh, in order to, to avoid repetition we need to make sure that uh, we are gonna work on one and then copy the others to get the final result that is what we want it to be
All right, so um, uh, we just worked on this bottle of um, I don't know what's what's what is the type of gas that is inside this bottle, but uh, it is something flammable. All right, so um, we are going to make sure that we are going to delete some of these edges here because they are not necessary. And uh, we are going to also make sure that this thing here is, um, let's see what we'll, um, actually this tube here is going to be separated because we are going to copy it and try to create a T-shape right there and we're going to make it smaller. We don't have to weld it though, but if we weld it, it's going to be even better. All right, so this piece here, this um, this this hexagonal, which means a polygon or a cylinder with with six sides, uh, is gonna be interesting because uh, I should say, or it's, it's gonna be a simple piece, but it's gonna be interesting because it's gonna add. Um, uh, a lot even though it is very simple all right we're gonna copy this one here as well and uh, put it right there and uh, we're gonna make sure that um, the size looks appropriate uh, uh, even though it's um, it's a little bit small we are gonna make sure it's gonna be uh, the size is going to be appropriate or is going to be proportional to the rest of the pieces. All right, so as you can see here, what we've done is we welded a uh, few vertices together to get another hexagonal or a cylinder with six sides. It seems like the symmetry modifier is giving us a tough time here. It's weird, but... Um if we copy it, probably... No. So uh, using the mirror is probably going to be the answer, and it is. So using the mirror is going to be better than using the symmetry modifier or copying the thing. So what you're going to do right now is try to try to 
attach these two guys together and we will create a bridge and delete the polygons in between. Okay, that was not that hard and we're going to do the same thing here. So we're going to delete that side and apply the symmetry modifier and hopefully it will work properly. If not, we can always use the mirror. Alright, so there are going to be nice, nice, some nice details we are going to add here and uh, yeah, we are going to extrude this a uh, little bit, probably we're going to get rid of these details because sometimes you are going to discover thir certain things uh, a little bit later as you work on them, which is not that big of a deal. Uh, if you don't fail and um, step into the darkness and uh, figure it out yourself, you're not going to know. So sometimes we have to try, we have to get our hands dirty in order to learn and yeah, be willing to make mistakes. That's what I was trying to say. Sometimes I don't understand how these models or kind of uh, the uh, the engineering behind these uh, especially weapons Sometimes you can't understand how the weapons uh, Look or the pieces are kind of Engineered until you start modeling them and when you do that you're gonna get a better understanding and um yeah, the always the, the second time is going to be way easier than the first one because uh in the first uh you're going to be you're going to have a difficult time but in the second uh you're going to have better understanding. For example, here we are using this line or this spline in order to create the tube that is going to connect uh, the body uh, that goes through to the the barrel uh, with the with the um, with the bottle of the of the gas or the fuel or whatever is in there I think it is a gas of course it is which is liquid of course through pressure because of pressure uh, gas in a liquid form is gonna be mu much more uh, economic But when it is released, it's going to be uh, in a gas form because this is uh, its natural form when it is not pressured that much. When it is not uh, under a tremendous pressure. All right, we are gonna. We are now trying to fix the shape or the position of some of these vertices in this spline or this line that is gonna be representing the tube that is gonna connect uh, the bottle of the of the gas to our flamethrower, and <clears throat> it's not gonna be that big of a deal actually. But we're going to make sure that we have a nice view from all angles in, in order to do that properly. Also, we are going to make sure we are going to connect it to the, uh, to the right piece. And 
and we're going to make sure that everything is in the right place. All right, I think, um, yeah, this is about it for the second part. And I'm sorry, guys, because <laughs> I'm sorry that uh, it took me so long to release this part. And, um, yeah, if you have something to add, please uh, tell me in the comment section below I've, if I was uh, too annoying telling you and related stories and talking about nonsense that is not related to the tutorial. I will see you in the next one.